very glad to uh, have the opportunity to uh, address such a distinguished group of individuals. Uh, on behalf of my co-authors, I'm going to be describing the work we've done to quantify the casket of HIV care in British Columbia. Uh, it's important to note that this work was done uh, with a longitud uh, longitudinally uh, in the interest of uh, fulfilling our monitoring and evaluation goals for the province. So this introduction slide is hardly needed in a session like this. However, we know, uh, you know we need to increase testing and access to care uh, in order to increase the proportion of HIV positive individuals with suppressed viral load uh, in the interest of reducing HIV morbidity, mortality, and transmission. That's worth emphasizing. I think we run a risk of losing sight of those three joint outcomes um, as opposed to focusing on uh, averting new cases solely. So clearly institutions have a role to play uh, in making this happen. It's not, uh, you know, there's a, there's a burden on the individual as well. However, we need to do what we can to deliver high quality care. Uh, and as you know, you've heard about it all day, the D WHO has endorsed the cascade of care and it's become a central me uh, metric for uh, treatment as prevention uh, implementation efforts. Sorry. So uh, this study was done in the context of the STOP HIV AIDS pilot project. Uh, uh, the, the BC Center for Excellence has partnered with uh, various local stakeholders um, to scale up testing and treatment uh, in the interest of reducing morbidity and mortality and transmission. Uh, this was all built on the back of uh, Julio Montaner's 2006 Lancet paper uh, uh, describing the task concept and then later the 2010 uh, paper showing the uh, ecological association between treatment scale up and new cases. So the key objectives of, the pi uh, of, of our provincial monitoring uh, project was uh, we're both monitoring and surveillance for the province as well as uh, some health economic questions that we had. Uh, this was all based on a comprehensive provincial uh, health administrative database linkage, which I think may be uh, unparalleled anywhere. We're quite lucky to, to have uh, linked nominal testing data along with our uh, antiretroviral dispensation, viral load CD4 tests, physician visits, hospitalizations, vital stats, all linked together in one place. It took uh, a mammoth effort uh, from a lot of different people to make that happen, but it's, it's happening now and um, we're seeing the benefits of doing that. So, um, as, as we know, administrative data can be difficult to deal with. We applied case finding algorithms to define our full cohort of individuals, which included uh, people who hadn't been uh, linked to care and weren't seen by the center, they weren't on antiretrovirals, or they weren't getting viral loads of CD4s. Uh, you can learn more about this fairly dry study in PLOS One. Um, note that uh, with our individual level linked database, we uh, could estimate every other step in the cascade but the prevalent population, of course. We don't have a good idea of the size of the undiagnosed population. We rely on PHAC estimates, which, is, which are drawn from a national modeling activity, which uh, use the same assumptions for BC as they do for Saskatchewan and every other province. We know we have a pretty good idea that that's, um, that's not ideal. Um, so you can see with our, um, uh, with our case, uh, our cohort, um, uh, the number of people diagnosed uh, as identified on our cohort has sort of been approaching the range of, uh, of, of PHACS HIV prevalence has actually uh, incre uh, has been higher than the bottom end of that range in recent years. So we, we have an idea that we're getting pretty good coverage using this method. Um, so these are the operational definitions for our eight stages of, uh, of the cascade. Um, note that there aren't formalized guidelines for the cascade just yet. Uh, IAPAC is working on that. Uh, the key takeaway, this is a lot of information on one slide, but the key takeaway is that we've used the three month um, durations to define not only retention, but also uh, being on antiretroviral therapy and undetectable plasma viral load. So in order to be classified as suppressed in this, in our study, we felt it was important to have a, 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 an episode of suppression lasting at least three months. 
so this is our cascade shown over time. Uh, as you can see, uh, largely uh, you see year-over-year -year improvements. Our biggest problem is uh, in retaining clients. Note that we have a sizable IDU population, making up uh, our total prevalent population. Uh, and as of 2009, 32.1% uh, of the uh, prevalent cases uh, had virological suppression based on our fairly stringent definition. Uh, now we've thought about how to, how to cut this data and present it differently. Uh, if you look at leakage, uh, leakage in the cascade between one step and another, uh, you can see we've, we've improved pretty dramatically in, uh, in diagnosing infected cases, again based on the PHAC estimates. Uh, as well as um, getting those adherent uh, to, the, to a level of suppression. Uh, now, of course, everybody who's estimating these cascades uses different quality of data. Very few of them that I've seen have been actually based on individual level data. Uh, so we thought it was important to do a sensitivity analysis on uh, the various definitions that you could plausibly use to define, uh, well, here we've shown viral suppression, but you know, we've done several other sensitivity analyses. In terms of viral suppression, uh, you know, the, the solid black line on the bottom is our very stringent measure of at least a three-month period of viral suppression. If you use just a single viral load measurement uh, within a calendar year instead uh, for, that, uh, for that step, we, we'd have uh, numbers of 40, 48% of infected and 56% of, of diagnosed. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, furthermore, it's not just improvements in, in viral suppression that we're seeing. We're seeing drops in viral load altogether in the province. Now, this is just, this is taking the, the worst viral measurement for everybody in, the, in, in the, the population who's had a viral load test in a given year uh, and plotting it over time. Of course, this, I, I don't call this community viral load. I think that term is misused sometimes. This is... I call it aggregate levels of uh, viral load. Uh, of course, within this population, we have a number of individuals that we don't measure viral load for. So if you tack them on uh, and assume that they were in the highest viral load strata, our figure would look like this. Um, now, next steps. You know, it, it, it was great uh, as an exercise to do this as an next step, but really the next steps are operationalizing this in, uh, this cascade and making it work for us uh, over time to improve our uh, uh, our HIV outcomes. So, um, you know, one thing to consider with uh, uh, test and treat, you wonder uh, whether uh, steps on retention and needing antiretroviral treatment as two of those eight steps in the cascade are even needed. Um, Anyways, our, our primary goal for this is to use it as a quarterly surveillance report for each of our health authorities, this being one element. And, uh, and it would detail this, the cascade by key strata. So you need, you know, you need the cascade within a, a given geographic region, but you also need some further granularity uh, for it to be useful to policymakers. So uh, Viviani Lima, my colleague, is going to be talking about heterogeneity in the cascade next. Uh, and of course, you know, me being a health economist, I feel the need to justify why I'm interested in this. Really, this is, uh, you know, all of our health economic work is going to be oriented around the cascade. It's really informing the relative value of interventions, targeting different stages of the cascade, and, uh, and doing those analyses using a common framework, looking at a long time frame, comparing costs and benefits. Um, of course, there are limitations, um, certain data limitations that we're dealing with, uh, non-nominal uh, HIV tests, it's out of our control. Uh, corrections uh, is, is a black hole right now. We don't know when people are being imprisoned. That, that causes us problems. Uh, and of course, there are delays in data capture, um, and, which can limit the timeliness uh, and the public health utility of the cascade. We're working on these things to make them as um, as updated as we can possibly make them, as, as real time as we can possibly make them to maximize their public health value. Uh, and of course, incomplete or inaccurate data, uh, particularly on the prevalence of the uh, of undiagnosed HIV, 
uh, can lead to inefficient or, or suboptimal funding allocations. So these are all things that we're uh, considering carefully. Thank you very much. I'd like to acknowledge my uh, a great group of uh, investigators uh, making up the Stop HIV study, study team. I'm very uh, pleased to be a part of this team. Thank you.